Hi guys, quick update here for YouTube. It's Friday 22nd of March, I believe, 2024. Hope everyone's doing great. If you want to join the group, everything's there on the links below. If you want to pay via crypto, it's either the two or three months. And also we're doing a three month discounted offer on Teachables. Now you do get access to the group, although the videos will get released twice a week on Teachables for those who don't want to get access to the group to see the videos. So you do have the option. Um, it's always a good idea to be part of the group just in case there's any ad hoc quick updates in between the videos but the videos are usually detailed enough you know where we're sharing you know many many decades of experience here trying to navigate ourselves through this very tricky market which has been fairly tricky i would say since the first youtube video and i think we've done a very good job of calling the major move so let's start off with the s p so we've nailed this call completely since pretty much March 2023 with a big regional bank move, that was the biggest player, the biggest gain last year was Western Alliance. Then we called the big move down. We said this move was fake. And then Q1 rally leads to a, sorry, Q4 rally 23 leads to Q1 rally um, 2024. Now, we said at the start of the year, if you wanted to make any gains here to the long side, that is, it had to be done in Q1. And we were looking for, at the start of the year, many, many weeks ago, um, a top somewhere between 54 and 5600 somewhere between the end of q1 and let's say june right so we've got another couple of hundred points here to the upside and another couple of months on the x-axis before we call what i deem as the c wave top this being what we think is a large ending diagonal doesn't look like a flat doesn't look like a zigzag it's not even possible and it definitely doesn't look like an impulse we think we're dealing with a near when all is said and done potentially six year ending diagonal and six years of course will obviously equal a very very large near vertical overnight crash that's going to take us much much lower than these lows here from 2020 anyway that's to come we're nowhere near there yet so short term another couple of hundred points i'd be very surprised if it gets much above 5600 to be honest obviously i'm on the spy here let's just make it clear on the spx um i'd be very surprised i mean maybe i don't know fix 5650 i'd be very surprised though if it touches 57 i don't think there's enough momentum and and you know real cause here to get us as high as that so i'm saying 54 5600 Let's just take an educated guess. Let's say, I don't know, 5575, five, right? So the exact targets are within the group. Uh, but it's it's important to have a, a ballpark. And in terms of time, you know, historically in an election year, um, up until June is rather bullish. And then we're going to reverse that entire trend. I happen to think there's enough reason to believe, uh, depending on NVIDIA and what that does, obviously, uh, which is a big driving force of all of this. And we identify that at the start of the year huge move in nvidia um even without leverage um you know we're, we're looking at another couple of months so another couple of months on the x-axis another couple of hundred points to the upside let's get into that 54 5500 region maybe tag 5600 nice euphoric headlines much like the a wave top from jan 22 and late 21 and then we're gonna basically spend well you may as well copy this here we're going to spend the second half of this year really struggling because inflation, we think, is rampant and we don't think the Fed's going to cut three times. We think inflation is making a big comeback. And obviously, you want to be positioned for that, okay? No good positioning yourself in two months' time. So in the group, we like to think ahead two days, six weeks, six months. We have to know what's going to happen in six months, right? And three, four months ago, we knew exactly in October this was going to happen. Well, guess what? Most of this move is now done. Even now, it's justified selling NVIDIA and crypto and everything else. Um, purely from a risk-reward perspective, it's justified, I think, selling everything. Or as a minimum, taking off the vast majority of the position. Obviously, percentage-wise, you make all the money early on. Does that mean I'm saying a crash is coming? No, not just yet. I think we're very close, though. Another couple of months... Another a couple of hundred bucks to the upside, um, and then and then basically we're going to end up coming back down again. And I truly believe the end of this year we could easily fit fill um, well um, you know end end um, you know net net on the year basically right zero. We could easily end this year 
back at zero, right? Because this D wave, now, it doesn't necessarily have to tag this A leg high, right? So let's just say it tops out. Let's just say, I, I don't know. Let's just choose a random number there. Let, let's just say 50. Yeah, well, let's just say 5,600, right? I'd be surprised if it hangs around too much. So, you know, we can end up coming all the way back down to form that D leg. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to, you know, take over the A leg, but, you know, textbook wise, we do like it to have some crossover here. Obviously, this D leg can't cross into here, but I'm not forecasting this. I don't think there's enough evidence to suggest that this top, which we're aiming for the next couple of months, is the actual top. This cycle still has more legs to it in terms of price and time. And in fact, um, this S&P can still go well above 6,000. Eventually, obviously, we're going to get a correction. So another one of these is coming, definitely. Um, anyway, going back to my train of thought, we could easily then fall into this very polarizing US election where no one really seems too sure who's going to get elected. I mean, I don't know. I mean, could it be RFK? You know, I'm not sure. You know, but Trump, Biden, um, you know, the way I see it is whoever's going to get elected, um, initially during their reign, I mean, fine, they could hang around here for a couple of months, you know, January or so, 25, you know, initially they're going to have a huge, you know, nice little bull leg there. Um, let's just guesstimate some targets here. Let's say this A, B, C, D, this D leg comes in at, let's just say it takes over this high by a couple of hundred, let's say 47. Let's say the market eventually gets to around six and a half thousand. So, you know, they're definitely going to be bullish in the first year of their reign. Um, but then, you know, late 25, 26, you know, Houston, we have a problem because the pattern is complete. So as far as I'm concerned, regardless of anything, the pattern is then complete. And an ending diagonal usually ends in a very nasty way. And obviously, to state the obvious, we think, um, well, we know that there's going to be massive divergence between these highs in terms of the Mac Daddy, the RSI, and any other indicator you want to use, okay? We're not a huge fan of indicators here because they're lagging, but you will see great divergence between these highs. And it's probably already going on. I mean, I'm probably going to get egg on my face here. Uh, but let's just say, I mean, I'm talking about the incredibly high time frame here. Um, yeah, I mean, you can already see it, right? Obviously, we're on a very, very high time frame here. We're on the monthly time frame. So each candle is a full month, 12 of them making a year. Right. I mean, you can already see that there. Right. Now, that doesn't mean, you know, a crash. But all I'm saying is if this ends up topping out here, by the time we do this next crash, once again, I'm, I'm on the monthly chart. This will take another, I'd say, one year to 18 months to play out. You know, what I mean, we're going well into 25, likely 26. As we said seven years ago, the world was going to end in 2026. So, you know, then we're going to do that. And that is gigantic divergence. Never been seen before. Six year ending diagonal on the monthly chart. I mean, I mean, technically you could draw a line from the previous eye back in the first YouTube video. Right. So these are very, very long term divergences going on right obviously the market can still go higher right market can remain irrational longer than you can remain solvent right to all the shorts on nvidia right it's, it's still going to go higher right if nvidia is topped why is the s p not crashing down towards 5k by definition it's not topped uh, you know there's a hundred percent correlation but that's that's what's really going on what's really going on is an unbelievable multi-year divergence that's going to occur here and by the year 2026 we have huge problems here because that amount of divergence is never you know that's never been seen before in human history so as far as i'm concerned that can only end in one way because eventually the price has to catch up with the reality of the situation forget about fundamentally just the reality of the waning momentum that is clearly evident, frankly, since the first YouTube video. So that is incredible long time frame analysis here. We are completing a gigantic super cycle that we've never done before. We've never completed this level of degree before. Obviously, that's going to take some time. We're in what? Q124. So at least another, you could even say two years from now. So um, slowly the wheels are going to come off there. Now, let's just... Um, but it takes time, uh, it takes a bit of time for things to collapse. 
Now, obviously, I mean, this could still go to 1600, could go to 1200, so this is a great call. We've got multiple members in the group here, about half the group are on multiple high six figures on this move. Now, the key was getting in early, right? You lose money on the entry and not on the exit. So, you know, if this is topped, as many people seem to believe, based on this one random candle of incredibly high volume, sure, that's some insider transactions getting out of the way. Yeah, you know, smart money getting out, but that doesn't necessarily mean a crash. You know, if this is going to happen, um, well, it's just not going to happen. So at least one more or a couple more new highs stall out above here. As we said, have a look through the previous YouTube videos and then it's all over for NVIDIA. It's going to come crashing back down to reality. And where is fair value? Probably down here somewhere. Um but you know timing is everything so this has been a great call i mean it's 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 not even a top 50 call frankly in terms of percentage move but the way that it's occurred the speed of it um i think is very very relevant and um, so that's what makes it a top 10 call so very happy with the nvidia call there and uh we got all the group members in on that uh because you know uh timing is off the essence here with this game now one thing we have been accumulating um, undercover since the start of the year and shaving off NVIDIA going in is Exxon Mobile. Now, I think this goes to a $1 trillion market cap, which basically forecast is going on. I mean, that's not going to happen. Um, it basically gets us all the way up to around 200 here, give or take. So, because this doesn't look bearish to me at all, this super cycle that's been occurring since here, that's just the way for as far as I'm concerned. So, as a, you know, it's, it's in a way five rally. So, you can just, I don't know, just get one of these and just shove it onto here if you like right so you know to me exxon mobile chevron too but generally the energy sector as a whole but exxon mobile standard oil over here um is is going to go much much higher so we, we've been quietly accumulating this at 100 right and um, obviously there's beta um there's a good beta proposition here because it lowers the volatility of the portfolio. There's obviously alpha going on, so you're reducing the portfolio of the in, um, of the portfolio. That's what beta is. There's alpha because you're making gains. You're not just been holding it sideways. There's dividends, and from a value perspective, it would go higher anyway. Now, what does this help to prove? It helps to prove the background thesis that inflation isn't done, and inflation's making a huge comeback. And this is what we discuss on the group. I don't want to give too much away, but I don't see inflation going down towards 3%. In fact, it's going to do the complete opposite. So you have to be able to forecast things well ahead of time. This is just setting up an AB. This right here, to me, is setting up a base. So I think people will be very, very surprised by what the Fed actually do. I think they're kind of trapped into a corner here. Uh, fundamentals are largely useless. That's why we don't like to talk about it too much. But for what it's worth, they are trapped in their decision making here. Um, it's not that they can't cut. It's that, um, well, it pretty much is that they can't cut. They're almost forced to not cut. And if they do cut, the market's going to crash. Because uh, cutting actually has the opposite effect uh, to what is believed. Um, so once again, it's a good lesson in just doing the opposite. Because it, because interest rates actually perpetuate inflation. Although many people wouldn't have that perspective. But regardless, whether it's the cause and the, or the effect, the way I'm reading things second half of this year is going to be very chaotic and this inflation this year-on-year -year cpi is going to slowly start creeping to well above eight nine percent and in fact it's going to take out the high from july 22 it might even take out the 70s high right that's how out of control things are going to get in the weimar usa over here um and you know I mean, it's just an ABC, isn't it, right? So, I mean, we don't think it's a 1, 2, 3. If it's a 1, 2, 3, it's going to go towards 50%. That's not even possible in the US. But definitely possible is 14, 15%. So, this is what you have looked forward to. You have to look forward to, once again, you have to think ahead. What is going to be the big beneficiary of that? Well, oil obviously is going to go well above $100, so what do you want to do? How do you play the oil trade? Well, you keep it simple. You always buy the stock. Always try and figure out which stock is it that you need to get along, right? Forget about the leverage and the ETFs and the the asset class like the oils and 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 and, and you know you got to you got to try and bring it back to the stock, right? There's always one stock which you can buy, and you got two choices. You either buy you buy Chevron or you buy Exxon Mobil. So 
you know, Chevron was good at the start of the year, but then we decided to just shave that off because there's issues with their Hess deal. Exxon Mobile is like the Apple, and then Chevron's like the Microsoft. Although you could argue Exxon Mobile is like the Apple and the Microsoft. It's just so powerful, and it's such a good looking chart because that is a Wyckoff accumulation. I mean, discuss this on the masterclass, right? Even if we were to break it down in a point and figure, right? So it's not only, uh, you know, Fibonacci derived targets that we teach. We teach how to calculate from these fancy tic-tac-toe noughts and crosses. Very, very fascinating. The calculation for those who have taken the masterclass, assuming that's a reaccumulation, which it obviously is. There's no reason to assume that's a distribution. It just doesn't have the hallmark of that at all. We're saying inflation is going 14%. We're saying oil might go to 150 now, right? So when you bring it all together, you can easily build up a trade or an investment picture, which basically, in simple terms, is this is going much, much higher, right? So what do you want to do? Do you want to sell the NVIDIA top, then FOMO into Exxon Mobile at 120? No, that's not what an efficient investor do does. They shave off. They sell into that strength. They buy on weakness and then sell into that strength. No one ever sells the top. If you're selling the top, you're not doing it wrong. Uh, you're not doing it right. In fact, you're doing it completely wrong. You sell on the way to the top, then you shave off, and then you add that to the other position. So to me, Exxon Mobile from this point, even from this point, over the next couple of years, it's going much, much higher, assuming we're right on our call on inflation. And there's no reason to assume that we are incorrect, because so far, everything's working perfectly to plan. So that is Exxon Mobile. I think we've killed that there. Right, good. Now, Bitcoin. Obviously, I deemed NVIDIA as the greater proposition. Um, and, you know, you can't be in everything. There's people in our group who have been in both Bitcoin and NVIDIA. So, well done. From here, we said 30. From here, we said 50. Bomb. It's gone higher than that. Well done to anyone who's been long credit where credit is due. Now, what is the most bearish interpretation that we have? Well, it's that ugly flat pattern that always seems to, you know, rear its ugly head over here, which is that all of that is just a large super cycle and bump, right? Obviously, worst case scenario. Now, for what it's worth, I don't think as of this moment in time, NVIDIA or the SPY have topped. I think we're about two months away. So if I had any inkling that those two markets have topped, specifically NVIDIA, um, I would be very concerned about Bitcoin right now. So I think there's definitely some selling taking place, as we have seen in NVIDIA too. Smart money never sells the top. They sell on the way to the top. But is this the actual tippity top? When we broke 20K, we made it all the way to 70K, right? I'm not saying we're going to make it much above 100. I don't, I don't even want to forecast above 100 right now. But this, I don't believe, is the top. So could we just take out this high, fail both of these, then come down? Yes, absolutely. So I'm not saying it's going to go much, much higher than that. We were looking in the group somewhere between, I'd say, 78 to 82K. And the reason we say 82K is... It's basically the 1.618 relationship between whatever this is, this A or 1, that's a B or a 2. And then that's how you get to 82K. And I don't like this high for various reasons. This looks like a liquidation. It doesn't look like a start of a major trend change, right? The only thing that's concerning me is that usually Bitcoin tops first and SPY follows. We're saying the SPY and NVIDIA and whatever else, Microsoft, all of them, are probably going to you know, have some issues here within the next two months, right? So it might just be a run back up to these highs. If this high gets taken out on some euphoria, leaves a bit of a wick, then it comes back under the 21 high. Then I'm getting very concerned. So I think as a minimum, we're going to run up back to these highs, then... Um, we're going to run into some issues anyway because we think 72 to 82 is going to be the target anyway. Um, so I think I think we're you know I mean we are pretty much there. Once again, it goes back to the Nvidia thing. Has the bulk of the money been made? Obviously it has, right? You know you, you can't say from you know let's just say you know even from the start of the year, right? Okay, even from here, right? 60% since the start of the year. So from a dynamic risk reward perspective. We're saying the SPY is going to top out the next couple of months. Is it really going to go another 61 from here? 
108? I don't think so. So definitely the bulk of the money has been made. Does that mean an imminent crash is coming? No. But it could easily just run this high, wake up to 82k, and then we're coming in. So, you know, this 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 just comes down to where your entry is, where, you know, your long-term investor or swing trader or day trader. Um do I think, do I like the high here at 74.415? No. Um, could it just run this high and then fail? Yes. Then if it reclaims or gets back underneath this level, then we got some huge problems, right? Very, very important to always remember, usually, not all the time, usually Bitcoin moves first. So the minute we're sure on Bitcoin having turned here to the downside, we have huge alarm bells ringing on the spy. Okay, so that's the only thing that's significant here. And I don't want to go into it now, but on the BLX, the other reason to get concerned is if you were to compare these ratios, which we have, um, we don't have the time to do it here. But basically, if you compare these exact percentage ratios, right, that's like 3 million percent or whatever crazy number that is, right? Obviously, it would have been a great time to buy Bitcoin in 2009 and sell a year later. Right, anyway, so I'm comparing the percentage gains. Obviously, it's law of diminishing returns here, and you can see that. These numbers are reducing. I mean, you, you guys can work this out, but basically, it's somewhere between 4.89 and 5.12. That's the ratio. That's the, that's the, you know, this divided by this, this into this, this into this, gets you a constant ratio somewhere between 4.8 and 5. I don't have the exact number turn because these are obviously not the charts I share with you. Then, if you divide that into here, it basically gets you around a 400% move, right? Once again, I don't have the exact um, numbers here, but we calculated it's coming in at around the same level, around that 78 to 82K. And I can't be the only one who's clocked onto this ratio. And it's obvious there's law of diminishing returns in every cycle anyway. Why? because the logarithmic curve is flattening in out, right? You cannot have an exponentially moving market for the end of time, which is not going to happen. Every every cycle is less and less percentage gains uh, before it eventually just flattens out and then has a large correction. Then we start another super cycle, right? I don't know. I don't know, million, 10 million? I don't know. You know, th th that's, that's, that's for post-2026 markets going to be very uncertain. You know, many people would have run to their nuclear bunker and... Um, whoever the new US president is is going to have a real hard time, unfortunately. So, um, I don't know. I mean, maybe people in the comments can uh, give us their uh, shout on who's going to be the next US president. Because um, uh, they're going to oversee something. Anyway, um, you, you guys can work the percentages out. Um, I believe the ratio is somewhere around 4.85. Uh, regardless, you divide that into 2,089%. Um, so, you know, the, these these cycles are definitely getting less and less and less, which is what makes the original Bitcoin 20K call the greatest call of all time. Because that, that amount of money to be made in that amount of time, that amount of gain, that had to be taken off the table. And so, I mean, that was a 120x on this market, and then 20x, and now it's not even a 4x, yeah? So what is the next market going to be? Hundred, you know, like a double? I mean, even less, maybe fifty percent. I don't know, but um, you know, they, they, it's, 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 you just gotta, you know, bear that in mind, right? It's very, very clear. There's law of diminishing returns. Does that mean there's not money to be made? No, obviously not, because you just buy the altcoins. You've got to know which ones to buy. And um, usually, when Bitcoin tops, it distributes. Uh, the dominance falls, and that's when you get an altcoin season. So um, anyway, that's that's just my uh, take on Bitcoin there. So um, do I think the bulk of the money has been made? Yes, absolutely. Yes. So, um, you know, that would be a wise, uh, you know, uh, you got uh, to, um, uh, uh, you know, protect your capital there, and then uh, you got to um, grow your capital after that, yeah? Um, I forget my uh, little saying that I always do. Uh, protect capital, grow capital. For some reason, my mind has gone blank there. I'm not too sure why. But um, those in the YouTube comments would remind me of the famous saying that I always say. For some reason, it's just not coming to my tongue. Now, um, yes, that's it. Preserve capital, protect capital, grow capital. So if you've grown your capital really well, like many group members have, never a bad idea to take that money, withdraw from the account, and then run for your life just in case the market turns. When this market turns, it will be like 2022 all over again, and the VIX will remain elevated for a very long time. Now, finally, 
obviously we cover all the altcoins here within the group now you know i mean we were buying at four saying it could go to a thousand now that could still happen first target second target third target has been hit i think it's likely we are making we at least make new highs after new highs i would say a thousand is possible it seems to be following the ethereum fractal um from a couple of years ago so you know in the event of some real euphoria going into the next couple of months could solano uh, flip ethereum possibly once again has the bulk of the money been made obviously it has you know this is 20x move even if it goes to a thousand from here it's only 5x so people who are late to the party here um they're going to really struggle to make some gains and in fact they're just going to be exit liquidity but for solano to make it all the way to 200 third target being hit um is it likely it now doesn't take this out i don't think so i think it is likely that it does take it out so possibly a thousand there um but uh, you know once again the bulk of the money has been made then i suppose you could just um I say that the four is in one two three four five so you know you can still see there's one more move up so i'm not forecasting a big crash yet i don't want to get too bearish bitcoin i'm not convinced if nothing else of the sentiment nvidia bitcoin s p it doesn't feel like a 20k bitcoin sentiment or a silver 50 dollars or a nasdaq 99 or a 2008 whilst we are getting quite euphoric in certain areas still I'm not convinced the average guy on the street has any idea that Nvidia is trading up here, which means, unfortunately, it has to go higher. And I say unfortunately because someone's gonna, there's a buyer for every seller. So someone's gonna be buying this at 1600, 200, a two grand, maybe it tops out at 1400, maybe 16. I've got the exact targets in the group. I can't give those away. But of course, I could be wrong. In the state of a real euphoric bubble here in Nvidia and a blow off top, it could spike. To 16 it could spike to 17 right but um you know it has it top though that topping candle that is not a top that is a preliminary point of supply coming in so definitely the first stopping candle has now entered the market so with the wyckoff distribution you always get a stopping candle this should be alarm bells for anyone who's long in video it doesn't mean it's topped it just means there's a first obvious very obvious sign that smart money is legging it because obviously they can't sell above a thousand for too long there's not enough liquidity up there they sell on the way to the top so that's the psy a preliminary point on the spy the first sign that smart money is legging it basically then you get the buying climax then you get the reaction and it just depends for how long it distributes for right could be a month could be a could be a week it might even just be a blow off top day and then boom so and then we're going to start the drawdown right so technically you could regard all of this as more of a slanted wyckoff distribution right so it's it's uh, you know it's um I mean, I wouldn't say calling tops and bottoms is futile because that would be silly because we know exactly when Nvidia was going to move at 400 and knowing where it's going to go is very useful. But knowing where things are going and actually investing in that trading that move are two very different things. It's very useful knowing how high things have a high probability to get to. But that doesn't mean you always sell the buying climax. You're supposed to sell along the way and then rotate that money into let's say cash right you know, right you want to get defensive right vix call options right you think second half of this year is going to be really difficult exxon mobile chevron right exxon mobile has been cheap for at least a month now and no one's really talking about it they're only going to start talking about it when it breaks 120 or 125 makes an all-time new high it's a bit too late then you've already missed about three dividends going on well you've missed at least one dividend so um you know, I think I think um, people get a little bit too anal about the bottoms and the tops. I think they're very important, knowing where things are going to go. But um, you don't necessarily have to, um, you know, sell the exact top. And really, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be selling the exact top. You should be shaving off into that strength because there comes a point where there's very little reward left. I mean, there's still another. I mean, there's still money to be made obviously but um you know the bulk of the money across the board has been made and one has to be very cognizant of where the s p is you know we cannot just say this is going to go straight to six and a half thousand ten thousand we can't just say that right it's not possible because it doesn't look like an impulse 
So it has to be an ending diagonal. It's not my fault they went in to an ending diagonal. Really, that could have been the five. But then the way it started falling here, there was all kinds of confusion. And then once we did this, I was like, hold on a minute. There's something more going on here. And all that means is that they're extending this five in terms of time. So it looks a bit strange, this very, very long wave five relative to the wave one, which is all the way down here. Yes, it's very peculiar looking. Because you can't read that as a 1, 2, I don't think. That has to be the wave 4, right? So in this cycle, in this cycle degree, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? We think the 5 ended here in an ABC, and we think that was a 1, 2. Either it was a 1, 2, 1, 2, or it was an ABC running flat. So obviously, you know, the obvious question is, well, hold on a minute. You know, really, that should have been the 5, and it should have been it. You know, the market should be at 666. But uh, they've just converted it to an ending diagonal. Um which obviously now is is very long, five years relative to that. But then what can you do? You know, you just got to have to go with the flow, right? There's only so many interpretations that you have. Either it's a blow-off top or um, they've not crashed it here, which then around here, December 22, I knew something was up. There was something wrong with, with, with getting too bearish. Not that we were aggressively bearish because it should have crashed 50% overnight and it didn't. So there were already worrying signs here getting too bearish. And then when things like Meta and Nvidia started turning, Bitcoin too, that's when I knew something was going on. And obviously regional banks, we took full advantage of that. So, um, you know, you've got to be very quick here to change any opinion. But for right now, we are bullish until proven otherwise. But I reckon in the next couple of months, we're going to be forming a top very similar to here. And then we're going to come all the way back down. We could easily finish this year net, net, nil, zero. And then we have one more way five, and that's it. That's the way five off the five, 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 off the one. And that's never happened before. How is that going to end? Let's see.